so um so welcome everybody i um i have got today um juan nunez del prado who's my teacher of the andean tradition and um we want i want to focus on um some of the the traditions that we we do and um i've asked juan to to tell us a little bit about that um, well, first of all, um, I'll introduce you to Juan here. So Juan, could you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and how you came to the Andean tradition? Okay, I'm Juan Nunes del Prado Bejar. Uh, I am Peruvian. Now I am 75 years old. I'm an anthropologist. And I dedicate almost all my life to the study of the Andean spiritual background. I started this very early in 1968, in which with uh, Juvenal Casaverde, which is another anthropologist, and Father Manuel Marsal, who is a Jesuit and an anthropologist too, we together in 1968, uh, we did the field research in anthropology and uh, totally uh, separate. But the same year we were researching and we found something equivalent because we become the discoverers of the Andean religion, of course, for the academic world. This is 1968. Uh, the three articles, the three first articles about the Andean religion at that time was totally new, were published in a magazine together, just by chance. And this is the beginning. And the beginning, I thought this way of seeing is a complete cosmology was only something specific for a little community in which I did the research. With these three guys, I realized the way of thinking covered the whole region of Cusco. And then I worked in the Peruvian revolution, which is a huge is probably the main transformation in my country in the 20th century. And working with the government, I had the opportunity of travel all over the Andean area, more or less around, around of 2000 kilometers of Andean mountains. And I had the opportunity to, to work literally with 100, directly with 100 Indian communities of my country. Then I was, do, uh, I was doing my duties with the development project to which I was working with. But at the same time, I was just checking. I have in my background what I found as a Andean religion to say. And what I found is how this is a way of seeing the spiritual cosmos, which is not only of a community, not only of a region, but something general of the all Indian area in my country. Then in 1979, I started field research, yes, an academical one, uh, about the existence of Andean spiritual experts. Why? Because having this large and coherent cosmovision, spiritual cosmovision, uh, the only way to have that coherence is if the system receives a continuous feedback of experts. Let me explain myself. If the Catholic system of belief didn't receive the continuous feedbacks of the priests who are teaching and the theological who are making the whole system coherent, if the system is not receiving feedback, of course, it's going to break in pieces very soon, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, because of the coherence of the system, I hypnotized the existence of that expert. And I organized a research looking for these experts. Then I started the research and I found them. And I found how there were more than I ever expect because I was working just in the Cusco city and there were in that time, yes, in the Cusco Valley, 70 Pacos. Paco is the name of these experts. Then I found how they were organized in the hierarchy, four levels. 
And then I start to learn. I abandon my just academical position and I become involved in the work and I start my training with my master. My masters were first Don Benito Joribamán of the community Wasao. Second, Don Menchor Deza of the same community, but Don Benito was the right side teacher, Don Menchor was the left side teacher. Then they sent me to search for another master, El Jero. This was my first connection with the Jero mastery. And uh, I found there Don Andres Espinosa. In that time, Don Andres Espinosa was uh, uh, managing a school of Paco. And uh, I had the opportunity to be in that school in 1988. I stay with them, with him by a month, being receiving a formal training in the Andean tradition, and then I did my my career as Paco in several levels. I get the first, the second, the third, and finally in 1987 I received the initiation in the fourth level, which is the top level which is offered by the tradition. Uh, Today. Then after that, uh, I keep that just for myself. But uh, around uh, 91, I was invited to the Ministry of Tourism in my, in my country. And they showed me how there were people who come to the country looking for that kind of teachings. They invite me to do three or four lectures in the Ministry of Tourism. And then uh, they helped me to make connection with travel agents. Then the travel agents start to send me people. Then in seven in eighty no in ninety one, I share my initiation with Ivan. He was doing his his part by himself, and I share that with him. And we start to take. Uh, people by ourselves. In 94, we found a travel agents dedicated only to that. And this is what we were doing the last uh, 20 and so years until now. And then people start to invite us to do lectures about the tradition and well, this is what we did until today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, well, one of the things about um, this tradition is I always find it so difficult to describe to people. And I'm sure after it must be like more than 30 years now of, of you teaching this, could you give us like a, an explanation of what what the tra tradition is and maybe even say what would be the, the real essence of it? Um, well, uh, usually I speak about the tradition as an spiritual art. Uh, I made it very explicit. Because basically, of course, there is a back, well, background of system of beliefs. There are uh, a backward, backward of something like uh, a theology or a philosophy in the back. But for the master, this is not the, more, in the most important thing. The most important things are the performances, the exercises. Then, if you perform and engage with the exercises, you don't even need to start to agree with the system of beliefs of the Indian religion. And because of that, I call it a spiritual art with the same meaning than martial arts. You know, this is a training with a set of performances who improve your spiritual capacities. Well, uh, you can call it the contemporary Inca mysticism too, because it's not a logic path, as I say, it's a Gnostic one, because every exercise is supposed to take you to certain personal spiritual experience, eventually to the experience of the enlightenment. And this is a mystic, it's like a Catholic mystics of Francisco. Uh, Francis of Assisi or the mysticism of the Dalai Lama, etc., is a mystic path. 
this is set of performances who can take you to a personal spiritual uh, experience. And so, um, sometimes I refer to that as the contemporary Inca spiritual art, because it's the heritage of the Inca civilization, which rise uh, in his imperial size in the 15th century. And uh, after that was conquered by the Spaniards, but survived until today uh, in his more characteristic factors to say. And it's a contemporary Inca spiritual art because it belongs to the tradition of the Incas, but this contemporary is not what it was in the 16th century. And some people um, would say it's, it's shamanism. Would you say it's shamanism or would you say it's, it's like very different from shamanism? Well, the only difference is the the sophistication of the system, because according to anthropologists, shamanism is the mysticism of the tribes. As you know, the tribes are certain size of human society. Beyond that come the uh, ancient civilizations, then the intermediate civilizations, then the contemporary civilizations, enlarging the large, uh, the large of the group, the size of the group, but increasing the sophistication of the culture. Uh, if you say so, if you want to put it in that way, the first step in the Indian tradition can be considered as a shamanic training. Mm -hmm. Then you move across another level, which take you to another larger overview. And uh, you can compare the, the Andean spiritual art uh, we to say the Tibetan Buddhism. The Tibetan Buddhism is not shamanism, it's something larger, mm. more sophisticated, yeah. belong to a civilization. Yeah, which is probably. But it's not contradictory. If you want to call them shamanists, I don't care about it. Yeah. The thing is not the name, the thing is if you perform the exercise and this is what the, the basic to this is you are going to pick up the benefit not under the main names of the marbles but of the practice mm -hmm. yeah because like you get a an actual feel for it yourself by practicing the each of the exercises so you get something tangible for yourself rather than just having a belief system really would that be well what I experience is uh, a literally growth of my capacity of really, of really understand certain kind of things. To say, uh, I achieve across the time a real global perception of the reality, which means I can connect with the whole of the humanity as considering them my family. This was not in the beginning. Mm. In the beginning, I was so attached with the, my familiar group, then to my lad national group. Uh, I think one of the most important things is the tradition really can enlarge your, your commitment with the larger group we can imagine, which is the global society. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Of course, when you enlarge your overview, it means you are not anymore under the local prejudices, under the national prejudices, under the subcontinental prejudices. You can clean all those limited aspects of your tradition and develop an overview eventually like the open and uh, welcoming overview of his holiness, the Dalai Lama, mm -hmm. keeping the distances. Of course, I'm not pretending being like, like his holiness. I, I am another person and that's it. But you can enlarge your overview of the world until you can really understand that kind of people like the Dalai Lama, like Mahatma Gandhi, etc. Mm -hmm. And that's what we would call the, the fourth level. So it's like the um, the there's the thing called the overview effect that the astronauts 
experience once they go into outer space and they're looking yeah. back at our earth. Yeah. 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 If in some way, usually through a mystical experience, eventually you can even have the really experience of seeing the earth of outside as mm. a big experience, as is called in the transpersonal North American psychology, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you have the mechanical experience, the result is the same. You have the perception of the earth as a unity. And after that, your overview of our human kindness is totally different. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can transcend the, the divisions of language, of race, of nationality, and you start to really feel all the humans as your, your fellows, your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. but really mean it, you know? It's not about uh, speaking about it, it's just perceiving that. Okay. Another thing eventually is the tradition has an enormous psychological healing capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually the tradition can trigger physical healings, uh, like uh, healing somebody of a terminal cancer. I saw few cases in which it happened, but this is not something we can manage yet under our will. But what I saw is uh, with psychological problems, the, the, the art could be very, very efficient. In my personal case, I had two psychological, strong psychological complexes related with my teenage. And the, the pad helped me to take it off. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so everybody has the ability to heal themselves through through these practices? Yes. Say, yeah. mm. um, um, if you want to compare what is essentially the, the, the system, you can say it's a active imagine, imagine uh, active imagination system is the system which was used by Carl Jung to develop his personal growth, to say, to trigger and develop his process of individuation, which is the process of psychological growth. Mm. He called, he gave to that kind of systems this name, uh, active imagination system. And he applied that to the Kundalini yoga he used for himself. And he applied this to the exercises of Ignatius of Loyola, who is probably the most important Western yoga. And so if you can have a definition of what it is, it is a active imagination system. Mm. And the, the two main practices would be Samin Chakwi and Saiwa Chakwi. Um, do you think, or um, the, so the exercise is Samin Chakwi drawing the energy down from the cosmos to clean your energy field and your body and Saiwa Chakwi to empower yourself from Mother Earth. Um, Being a, a yoga teacher, uh, I think you need to take a look of the integral yoga of Aurobindo. Mm. As you know, Siri Aurobindo is considered the spiritual genius of India of the 20th century. And he created the integral yoga. Mm -hmm. And the integral yoga is a mirror image of the Indian tradition. Mm -hmm. of, if, if, you, if you can look for something equivalent to the Indian, exactly equivalent is the integral yoga of Siri Aurobin. Mm -hmm. But I'm mentioning that because you mentioned the two exercises. Yeah. In the Indian tradition, something which is very important is the simplicity. And the same thing is in the integral yoga of Aurobindo, is the most simple of all the yogas, okay? Mm -hmm. And in the yoga of Aurobindo, there are two exercises. In the Andean tradition, there are two basic exercises. The first exercise for us is Saminchaku, which means pulling down the living energy of Father Cosmos, making it flow through yourself releasing down uh, the heavy energy in yourself, inviting that as a food to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. 
And the second exercise is in our tradition is Saiwachakri. It's connecting with the energy of Mother Earth, pulling this energy and making it flow through yourself and send it up. These are the two basic exercises of Aurobindo, of course, under a symbolical system of India. He speak about the pranayama, which is pulling down the prana of the cosmos and making it flow through yourself. And the kundalini, which is not the, the usual kundalini of the kundalini yoga, in which you focus on an energy at the base of your spine and you move it up through your spine. In this case, you engage with the energy, according to Aurobindo, with the energy of the whole, air, whole earth and pull it that and make it flow through yourself. Then it's a mirror image, as I say. Mm. And these are the two basic ex exercises. Uh, according to my teachers, you can even arrive into the enlightenment just only with these two exercises. Something you need to consider to have the complete background is what we call the Kausai Pacha. For us, the whole cosmos is alive. The whole cosmos is made through living energy. And then it's an overabundant uh, amount of light living energy and it's available for everyone who wants to deal with that. Second, what you need to you to drive the living energy is only your intention. Third, if you make flow your the living energy through yourself, what you are going to do is to awake your Inca seed. We talk about an Inca seed, which is the potential to become enlightened. It's like the inner Buddha in the Buddhist or the inner guru in the, in the yoga. But if you flow, make the energy flow through that and touch that factor in yourself, this is going to awake your human potential, which is a potential which can take you eventually into the enlightenment. In this way is the same statement than the contemporary tantric Buddhist, in which you can perform certain exercises and you can be enlightened in one life, they say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. One of the, um, well, actually two of the exercises that I, I want to focus on, um, because we're in, in Ireland here, we're, we're coming into Samhain, which is like starting to, you know, it's a, it's a Celtic um, festival where you go, Halloween came out of, you know, and um, I know in some Latin America countries, they have, um, the Day of the Dead on the 2nd of November, which is when I'm going to start my course. And the couple of the exercises that we do in the Andean tradition is uh, Wachai, uh, which is about your birth and how to also, it's an exercise for clearing um, your path and Wanui um, about your death. Would you be able to like talk to us a little bit about that? by both those exercises and anything else that comes up? Well, these are two specific exercises which belong to the teaching of Don Andres Espinosa, the master, the hero master I referred before and I learned in 1980, in 1980 and are part of the teaching of Don Benito Coriolan too. But the exercise of Don Andres is an exercise of you can do it at home. The exercise of Don Benito is related with uh, our places. In this case, to uh, caves. For us, the caves are uh, very special power, or, uh, female power connected with that. And going in in the cave eventually could means to return back to the womb of Mother Earth symbolically. Of course, one exercise is one exercise you can do it at home but in the other, you perform it in a cave as being in the womb of our common mother, okay? This is the only difference. Then uh, for these two exercises, the basic technique is Saminchaku. What do you do? You start the Saminchaku, which means you make the energy flow through yourself 
And when you have the flow, having the flow very fast, you may be intention to go back in your life. Then you are going to recover certain memories. It happens naturally. If you feel the memory you recover light, just you connect with that and enjoy it. If you feel it heavy, you just make the intention of releasing the heavy energy related with that memory to Mother Earth. And that way you are uh, making light your connection, your personal connection with your personal life, with your personal story. Eventually, you can recover the moment of your uh, birth, which is Wache, or even eventually you can recover the memory of the moment of your conception. If you do that, if you touch the moment of your conception, then after touching that, you invoke your parents and you work with the fields of energy of your parents. Allow all the energy of your parents to touch you and then release through your Saminjakui all the heavy energy of the energetical field of your parents. In that way, you are rela relating with your ancestry. But you don't need to go back because the parents are the synthesis of your ancestry. You and your parents is the, the, the synthesis of all the living heritage you have. And if you clean the bubbles of the two, you are cleaning the whole thing. If you want to go back, this is uh, optional. You can do it. It's not a forbidden thing. But uh, according to the master, it's just enough with the two parents. Then, after you recover your connection with the moment of your conception, or you recover the connection with your moment of the moment of your delivery, which is very important for the Indian tradition, then after being light to say, you can reinforce yourself. And what you do is starting for the moment of your conception, go back, no, go, uh, go in through, go, um, from the from the past to the present, and then eventually you can project to the future. But doing what? Doing a saiwachakui. To do what? To reinforce yourself. It's making yourself light and reinforcing yourself. It's a process in which you are, this is the usual way of growing. You know? Releasing and reinforcing. And um, with <clears throat> The Wanui, you're uh, looking at your death as well. So what? Oh, well, mm -hmm. if you do that, you arrive to now, mm -hmm. here and now. But from here and now, you can project yourself to the future. And the most distant fact with which you can connect is your death. You imagine circumstances for your death. You imagine that circumstances and no, first you start with your Saminchakui, okay? You imagine the circumstances of your death and then you imagine yourself die, okay? Eventually, this exercise could trigger an experience of life after life, to say, a connection with that kind of energy. And if you do that, of course, the anxiety about dying is going to be banished because you know how death is just uh, something which is a transition or something. But one thing is to speak about that, to speculate about that. And another thing is have this kind of experience in which you touch the life after life. In that way, uh, Wachai is a very powerful healing tool 
to heal stress. And Wan Yui is a specific uh, power of healing the anxiety. And if you take a look, the main, the main psychological diseases of our time is or stress or anxiety. Anxiety is uh, something which happens because you are projected to the future too much. And um, depression is something if you are engaged with your past too much. The whole exercise put you here and now. And this is the place and space and time in which you can really uh, use your personal power. If you want to make changes, you're not going to make it in the past or in the future. You are going to do it right now and here. And this is in certain way the background of the tradition. Allow you to be as you are here and now. I mean, emphasizing as you are, because you are not trying to be somebody else. You are trying to discover what is called your seed, and your seed is yourself and the Jungian sense. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but in the Jungian tradition, there are two centers. One is the ego, and the other is the self. The ego is just the center of your conscious mind. And the self is the center of the whole psyche. What we call the Inca seed could be uh, seen as the self of you. But connecting with yourself are going to give you a very nice idea about who you are. And as you know, all the humans are different. We are, thank God, we are different. You know? it's, the rule is follow yourself. Discover yourself and follow yourself. Be yourself. And do you think that, uh, do you know, when, when I start to talk about th this course that I'm going to be teaching uh, about death, people just have like such a big fear about that. And of course, they, they're like, oh, no, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> um, well, in the Excuse me, but in the Western civilization, we become a bunch of cowards. We don't <laughs> even want to deal with the heavy things. And another thing we don't want to do is to make commitments, you know? This is uh, things the people are rejecting all the time. But the healing is in making commitment something, especially with yourself. It's the base, most basic commitment you can do. Be committed with yourself, okay? And then deal with the heavy things, including with the death. The death is the top of the fears. But if you deal with the top of the fears, another little amount of secondary fears are going to go out. And if you do that, uh, you are going to enlarge your personal power. And personal power is not a mystery. Personal power is the difference between the things you can do and the things you cannot do, okay? Mm -hmm. And have you had many experiences, like when you do the, the one you eat, do you have like different uh, death experiences come up each time that you do it? Because I'm sure you've done this hundreds and hundreds. I don't get the point. When, when you do the exercise of one you eat, because you're doing it each time that we do your course, you know, when you do the, the 10 day Hatun Karpai or whatever, um, you're doing Wanyui with us as well. And do you have different sequences of uh, your death that appears to you uh, that you need to clean the hooch out of? Or, um, or is it that, what kind of experiences do you find that you have with Wanyui? Could you share? Well, when, I'm, when I am training people, I do the exercise by myself too. And then if the teaching is something take you doing the exercise almost all the time. Uh, not now, but when we were teaching, usually with Ivan, we spent uh, around eight months a year just teaching, mm -hmm. which means we were almost in a spiritual retreat for eight uh, months a year, okay? <laughs> I'm not asking you to do it in that way, but every time you do something, 
you are going to discover a new little thing there. If you do the uh, Wachai, in certain occasions you are going to deal with certain aspects of your life, and in other exercises you are going to deal with another ex uh, aspects of your life. In the beginning is going to be a mixture of everything, but when the with the time it becomes more and more specific to say, uh, are, I am going to perform the watch I today, and suddenly I'm going to do, discover all the problems I have in the in the in the way of learning to say how I has a trauma learning in my ABC in the in the beginning of me, my school or what happened before when I get that because that or that or whatever, you know? But in, today could be about learning. Another way they could be about feeling and I can recapitulate all the, my personal story about my feelings, uh, about my impulses, just to give you examples. Hmm? But you can track different lines in different times. This is, of course, after you start to perform uh, frequently the exercise, okay? Because it's an art. And an art depends on the time you commit to perform. This is the secret, you know? And the same thing happened with the debt. But in the case of the debt, there is something very interesting. In the beginning, you need to choose. You decide consciously which is the kind of debt you are going to enjoy, to say. <laughs> and you do that, next time you can change, etc., etc. But after performing this for a certain time, there is an image who is going to emerge spontaneously, which means you start to see, to say, a car accident or etc cetera, etc cetera. but it happened uh, beyond your 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 wish okay by himself then you focus on that and you try to see every detail of this situation when you have every detail of this situation you already saw what could be the circumstances which surround your death, okay? Then if you achieve that, when these circumstances emerge, you can put yourself in the side, you know, <laughs> and allow this set of circumstances to go away. You can enlarge your, your stay in planet Earth to say, it's a very sophisticated detail. But you need, of course, to arrive until the point in which an image becomes once and once and once again, then you can see all the details. To see, if I saw this as the moment of my death, the same room, the same screen, the same computer, I can be a little afraid about I'm close to to see the face of the dead, you know? Yeah, yeah. Then I can just close the, the meeting, go away, and, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you it's something you can do. Uh, yeah. You cannot do it forever, of course. We are going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. But in the case of my master, at least I think he did that for three or four times. Okay? Mm -hmm. You start to have certain kind of control about your death. And this is, this is a huge amount of personal power. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not the only tradition who look for that kind of experience. In the tantric yoga, there is an exercise which is, uh, the name is, as if I remember, the powa in which you see your death. Mm -hmm. And after you see your death, if the circumstances are not present, you are technically immortal, <laughs> <laughs> to say. This is the extreme, you know. As you can see, uh, can take you to some uh, really unthinkable uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. 
unthinkable for the common people. Mm -hmm. And did you have like some experiences yourself where you think that you have, by using this exercise, been able to avoid a situation where you may have died? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> do, you, do you want to share one? <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, it's I did. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can avoid that. That is a personal. I did at least two times. Wow, that's incredible. I kind of. I hope to 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 be here to my hundred years. If yeah. I can do that two or three times more, <laughs> my commitment today is uh, to do it with the with the pandemic, <laughs> because in this case it's something you can see, you know. It's an extraordinary occasion to perform one year. Mm -hmm. Because you need to, you don't need to imagine anything. You need just to think yourself sick with the pandemic and deal with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's here, it's around all of us. Yeah. We are in danger of dying, you know? Mm -hmm. And the first thing you are going to achieve is releasing all the anxiety the people have, is having about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I'm going to win, maybe not, maybe I'm going to die with the pandemic, but anyway, I'm much better if I don't have the anxiety, you know? Yeah, exactly, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a real time for everyone to perform one way because the pandemic is something real and the most probably thing for every one of us is we are going to die with that, is the danger of today. Mm -hmm. It's more, much more probable than any kind of dying for all of us. Can you see? Yeah, and, and that's exactly what you're saying about the anxiety is that fear of your future. And then there's so much anxiety at the moment because people are afraid of dying um, of the pandemic. All yeah. our plans, really break down you know mm -hmm. we are in the middle of a terrible anxiety all of us mm -hmm. yes face it mm -hmm. this is the attitude of the tradition if any if there is a chance yes face it go on and do you think it's um i'm not saying uh, if you perform that you are going to have the guarantee of not dying i cannot say that because no. we don't have yet this power Mm -hmm. But at least what I can say to you is you are going to release the whole anxiety and you are going to be capable to use this time in a more creative way. It's, it's going to be really powerful right now, right away. Yeah. For all. Yeah. I don't want to create false expectations. I cannot guarantee you are not going to die with one day. I cannot do that yet, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think it would be. Do you think also there's a lot of collective trauma from this uh, that we could be healing in groups? You know, a lot of people are doing like prayer groups and things like that. You know, to try and <laughs> this is something that. amazing. Yeah, as you know, the Incas were very open in what is called the official Inca religion was a convergence of different faiths, okay? Mm -hmm. All the different kind of uh, religious beliefs of the Andean area, which was huge. And they were able to put together all these different traditions and perform exercises together. This is already happening, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. In Peru, there is an association of the interreligious uh, so-and-so, and they did the prayer together. And for a morning, they were praying Muslims, Christians, Catholics, nya, nya, nya. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. This is an amazing circumstances. Mm -hmm. We are starting to transcend our dogmatical attached to our own spiritual tradition. We are starting to discover how every other religion is good. Mm -hmm. Can you see? This is happening now. Mm -hmm. And it's happening to all of us. Mm 
because there were not this kind of prayers here. I hear there were that kind of prayings in Jerusalem, and I hear in the Vatican they organize something like that. Can you see the people praying together, yeah. transcending all the different uh, differences? Yeah. In certain way, this is an opportunity. If you start to do that, you are going to, in certain way, connect yourself with this common prayer. You know. Mm -hmm. And even I can predict the, the results. Yes, mm -hmm. because once we were with Ivan in New York City, and we went to Ground Zero, of course, expecting to be in a very heavy place. We are right there and there were not any heaviness in ground zero. What happened? The people meditate, pray and so and so in, the, in that place. And they, they take off the whole heavy energy of the place. Mm -hmm. If these circumstances could do that with the place in which a tragedy happened, of course could do it with the whole world. Maybe you are facing a huge opportunity to to do the next left forward, maybe. And do you think also people that don't believe in a in a particular religion, but uh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you just perform, I don't care what do you believe. I tell you that before. This is the treasure of the tradition. I don't care what do you believe. You can stay believing in whatever you want, or you can disbelieve if you want. But if you perform the exercise, if you engage yourself with the performance, I don't care. The tradition doesn't care. And this is the amazing and beautiful thing mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. Instead of speaking the cosmic living energy of Father Cosmo, if you are an atheist, but do you, you believe science? You can use the word uh, what's the name of that? The beginning of beginning and the moment of the beginning. The, oh, the Big Bang? Yeah, it's the, the, it's the technical name of that. Singularity. Oh. Mm -hmm. You go back, okay, in time. You arrive to a point in which you cannot go further, but must be something there. The scientists are calling, calling that the singularity, but this singularity is not matter, cannot be, because it's the origin of matter, it's the origin of space of time, it's something metaphysic. You don't need to believe, you need to just know some signs. Instead of uh, speaking about the mighty God, start about the, the first. Uh, Singularity, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely open. I don't care what you believe. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is the master didn't care about that. Did you see the heroes? Never ask you what is your system of belief. Mm -hmm. They perform the ritual, the healing, the despatch, or whatever is your system of belief. They don't care. I don't care too. Mm -hmm. Amazing, because it just is a fact you are alive. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. And the living beings can propel transformation in themselves, performing certain kind of things. This is the law of life. Then we have a set of performances who can change your life. And it's not important if you are uh, Peruvian, African, German, or if you are a Catholic, Muslim, or whatever, it's an art. Because of that, I call them an art. Of course, it's based in the Andean religion. But my research of the Andean religion was before. Mm -hmm. Then I recovered that. We, with Ivan, we recovered that, which is something 10 times more powerful, I think. Mm -hmm. Because it's able to transcend boundaries, any kind of boundaries. It's just a, a, such a, the exercises are so sl simple um, and there's just so many valuable experiences that you can get by doing the Andean tradition. 
And I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to have this conversation with you, Juan. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I'm being, I'm being very, very selfish because do, do you remember the rule of Don Benito? No. I was looking how I can get the next level, which is the fifth. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you, when you share with somebody all the things I teach you, then maybe you are going to receive more. And, and the other <laughs> tradition, the, the best way to be selfish is to teach everything. <laughs> <laughs> and this is okay. every time you go, a master is empty. <laughs> you taught us everything at the end of the course. <laughs> well. Do you have anything else? No, that's this is brilliant. Thank you so much. This is really, really good. I mean, I could ask you like a lot more questions, but I think this is this anytime. Is Thank you so much. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks again, Juan. <laughs> My pleasure. See you, dear. Bye.